I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. This is Don. I don't like playing. To just respond right away. It's unfortunate. I did stop by there last week. I had kind of like a week to think about it. So, you know what? Like we could do something for night because we never did, you know, fully, you know, help him the way you expect someone to. Just tell him, yeah, here's how long you stay here or some parameters. Like, could have actually not been homeless a lot longer ago if they had just told me that. I think they would have to get back to me and the use station did have a special event, which means I can't charge my phone, phone charger I need to, which I covered. Well, it's not a video, it's gonna be up yet, but the point is, is like, let me tell you this, when I first started staying in Chris and John, I was there for a long time. It was snowy, it was like very, very bad winter. It was awful. And when I decided to go back to West Virginia, so my dad finally waited after September 8th to Christmas Day, completely fine. If I was to die without a home, completely fine with it. Um, and for me, making me homeless in 2016, I absolutely know that going back to West Virginia might actually be the way out of homelessness. I really did. I didn't think I was going to stay in West Virginia very long. Well, I meant that. Both me and my dad. Both. He said, I really did Tell the truth. We both thought I wasn't going to be with the dream all. I was going to go to like Washington, D.C. or something like that. We could never get up playing the belt. That was already in motion before I got on West Virginia soil. It's already something we and him said, yep, sounds like good to us plan. Could never do that because my dad was sleeping with a seven year old boy. Okay, it causes problems to like bounce in and out of West Virginia, which you could do in this country. And I did. Just came right back here. Got more of it. I already had. I was always doing homeless. Fighting for what you already had, even if it's an ID, pack of crackers, something, else, something like that. It's what you're always doing. Long enough to find out what God needed me to know. Dad is sleeping with seven year old boy. It breaks my heart all of the time, every single second of every single day. And I can't just forget about my dad because he's sleeping with the seven year old boy. Sound good? Well, Griff was the first person I said I'm going back to West Virginia, and he did not like it. He did not like the idea of it. He was like, so I was staying with race night. That's what he said. He was like, he did not, he didn't know, we didn't know. My dad was sleeping with a seven-year-old boy. I was like, thank the Lord, praise the Lord. Hey, Lord no. Lord no, I had to get down here and find out. Or probably honestly know my dad would be so stupid. He would leave me in a house with no fucking water. And thinking that was gonna be okay for the son he already made homeless. It would not be okay for the son he didn't make homeless. His dad never did that shit to him. You don't do that in the greatest country in the world. And paint all bunch of American flags. Call yourself a Christian. And tell yourself you didn't go to jail when you when you did. Hey, he's a dirt bag. Of the highest little degree. But, you know, now I'm such getting here. I'm at Palmer Center. The rest of the what the sign says. It's not safe here. I'm here, and I had to make this decision right now. Right now. I, had, I barely got in to wait for the bus to take me off. Not, not, we're not staying here where there is beds. Downtown, there should make so much sense. We're getting bussed out to Holly Street, way up there. I'll be putting miles, you do not believe, all over the city just to survive all the time when I could have always, a year ago, just had Chris and John's, maybe never even went back to West Virginia, I'd probably never been homeless, but you know what, we would have never known, my dad was sleeping with that seven year old boy, and we need to find his ass, because Representative Anita Hall can't take it, she just quit, she's just a boomer that quit, she's just as I watch him out there, have you seen Nate quit, yep, Nate has got something stronger made out than what the boomers got, because I ain't quitting yet, this video will live online forever, because it needs to have all of this needs to have this is the real America's play this is the American story for over three million homeless people and every single one of them's got something horrifying like their dad's like a seven or a boy or their parents with them they live with marry their sister there's something like that going on all the time and I gotta turn this phone off it's a hazard for me having it on it's here it is gonna be a rough rough night that I knew See, I'm not in the mode to go on a date not in the mode to go meet somebody new. I'm in the mode to never cry about what already happened today and the last five or nine days and 
Since 1997, when my parents said, hey, Sarah Tans, you look like a good idea. Let me just, you know, break our promise to God, and then maybe you'll be delegate of our hometown for 16 years. It's all going to happen. Hey, Michelle Fry. Elaine McMillan Sheldon may get Emmy nominated for just showing us what I already knew, how bad McNeil County is. But I was risky enough to take this picture. Because we're not just staying in the cafeteria and going right on to the book beds. Oh, no. You need to know the truth. We're now standing outside for an hour. I knew this was going to happen, too. It's always this way over here. It doesn't matter how cold it is. We're going to stand and survive. For whatever reason, I don't know, but this is what the homeless shelter makes you do, and because I'm the best, here's the rest of the video you need to watch, which is like the last, about an hour ago. I'm going to walk you through here. We're having like a homeless emergency right now. A homeless is an emergency. It's a stain no parent should ever let happen to their child, much less make them that way, like my dad did. Tom Acosta in 2016, because he chose, decided the wrong person had to be homeless. I wasn't the one stealing money buying crack cocaine, but let's go on for a moment. I am, I take a bus, it's warm in here, it's cold outside. I have a job interview in less than 24 hours. The number one thing you want me to do is go back to work, but how can I? And I was already at a food bank less than 24 hours ago and had somewhere warm and safe to stay until I didn't. It wasn't my fault. It really just wasn't my fault. So, what am I gonna do about it? What is the best thing to do? You know, you've been homeless, maybe, maybe don't know. You got homeless at the job interview in less than 24 hours, but you can't, you have to survive it. Do not. Um, plenty of blame to go around. I'm gonna go to Union Station. It's warm in there. It's open till like midnight. It's like 6 p.m. right now. Chances are likely I'll find somewhere to go in the city, somewhere in a city of three million people. One of them will say you can stay here tonight. Maybe. We're hoping. It'll be plan, plan D, I guess. Plan A, there we go homeless. Plan B. Um, stay with someone that I like to stay with. They had to go out of town. Ain't their fault. There's nothing wrong with that. I get it. Plan C, for me, let's just stay with someone else. Plan C was a wacko. Kind of knew that already, but didn't know today was going to be a day, but it just, it was. Plan D, just now go to the station, hang out there. In the warmth, there is power. I have got to survive and be job interview ready. Plus 24 hours, and I don't know where I'm going yet. Anywhere in the city, it could be 30 miles from where the job interview is. But I have to, this is the conditions you put me under. And I just want to say like, we're coming up on the year anniversary of when I went back to West Virginia. It's kind of like an emotional trigger time for me, okay? People I'll stay with at the time, Chris Michael Judge and J.R. Joseph, Josephson, John. It's not really John's fault, I don't think, because Chris can never, and I came back from West Virginia and I stayed with him again. Chris can never talk to me and answer some very basic questions. Can I stay here long enough so I can work, get a job close to where I'm here? I can work. It was also hard to get food there. What was one drawback to staying with Chris and John? It was tremendously hard to be close to the grocery store, carried off. We had trouble getting food, but like Chris never asked the question, can I stay here long enough to get a job and then get a room? Could have all been solved way back like, over a year ago. Chris can never answer that question. I don't know why. It really bugs me. Because I've had to endure a whole year of going without a home stale. Because partially, it's always my parents' fault first. 1997, when I was 10 years old. It's also my dad's fault when he made me homeless in 2016. It's also my dad's fault he slept with a seven-year-old boy. It's also my dad's fault he put me in a house with no water in it, thinking that was good enough for the son he already made homeless. My brother clearly is never going to catch up and be like, you know what, he's right. Nathan's right. Maybe you could be, because I have to be right to survive, and I've been right so far. Chris and John, John told me this, have a passion for wanting to help gay homeless men. Technically, they did help me survive the nights I stayed there. But had they just answered their question and helped me be able to make plans, real ones, that made sense. So now I wouldn't be homeless this long. I mean, I think that there's something that can be learned here. Chris, you need to tell people, you know, 
be in the condition Thomas in and stay with you. We need to know. You know we stay with you long enough, but we don't have to. We can actually run around or something. You know, it's just like very basic stuff. Thank you very much. And I hate it. I hate it. Guess who hates it more than anybody watching it? Me. Be right. I know. Remember, I can't do anything else right now to survive. Right now. Right now. Surviving right now, right now. It is literally a second by second. I'm gonna survive and I gotta find somewhere to go. Union Station will close in a few hours. I've got to already be gone in a few hours so I can make it to that job interview and get back to work. Come on, right now, right now, right now, right now.